Hello guys, welcome back to Go Discs. We're back again reviewing New Who, of course. And in this place now, we've got Series 8 from 2014. Uh, Pierre Capaldi's first series as the Doctor. Um, so, Series is a bit of an interesting match because I do think there's some good points to it, of course. Um, first down is to Capaldi himself, who was actually, really, you know, his first series, how he's portrayed, he's portrayed the Doctor, is very more, um, you know, very sort of gumpy, dark, gumpy, dark, very... You know, very, very alien, very sort of has a bit of edge to him, really, and that sort of you know he's very stripped back in terms of his costume and everything, you know, and basically again brings that sort of interesting thing to the forefront, really. You know, rather than be charming, flirtatious, and just a bit, bit more amiable, a bit more, I don't know, like from Tennant and Smith beforehand. You know, he's really he takes it to a different direction. It does really. I would say, um, in close part with Chris Eccleston, really in some in some places, but. Um, his betrayal here is actually really pretty good, actually. You know, um, sort of fits with fits with you know what I think what they really want to do, make him a bit jarring to some people. Really like 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 they did with Colin Baker back in the eighties. Really, you know, it's like something like that. But who knows? If people talk to him like a Doctor Walter, fair enough. I certainly did. Certainly did. I certainly did because I knew because I knew Peter Capaldi anyway from various movies and TV shows beforehand. So seeing him, it's like oh okay, it's gone with him actually. So that's pretty decent choice actually because I dub him as an earworm actor he's a good actor he's a, he's a great actor it's Capaldi fantastic it's just his talent doctor who's been sort of shafted a little bit of course in terms of the tip material if he had a better run of stories and sort of like you know maybe a bit consistent really in, in his tenure that would have been one, one like a very good great hero just depends really but there we go so let's go for his story so we we go about 13, of course, I'm cleaning the Christmas special, of course, at the end here, so here we go. So, deep breath. This is, say, Victoria London. We got the Turk return the Pyanoster gang for the last time, actually, because they never actually re reappeared again until Big Finish took over the rights, really. So, the last televised appearance of, you know, Vastro, Jenny, and Strax. And it's a decent look, decent story it is. Obviously, it's to, we've also got to turn the clockwork droids as well, a different type of version of clockwork droids. But it's the same sort of thing from the girl in the fireplace, actually. So we have a, so they sort of returned. Interestingly, actually, you've got Peter Ferdinand as the half-faced man he's known as, actually. Really great performance, very interesting. There's a lot of good body horror stuff as well. The scene when, in the restaurant, when the Doctor and Clara reunite, and the doctor, you know, like you know, looks looks at it for you know, and somehow rips his rips the face off, reveals like a ga like a gas, like like an, it's like an empty hole shell with a with a, with, a, with a flame sticking out, a bit weird. I was say you know, I was say you know, look at a human face. I said oh, okay, all right, and then she, and he sticks it on her on her face, like look, and he just puts it on, and he just sticks it on, puts it on, her, on her, like an actual human flesh on her face. My God. That is some you don't see that in Doctor Two as much, you know, like you know, you think oh look at this, it's like. Yeah. Well, examine this. It's like you know, like a severed hand or something, and and, and the panicking fear and they drop it. You think, oh my god, you know. Um, yeah, it's just like one of those things. It's directed by Ben Wheatley, who's a acclaimed British horror director. He's done quite a few things. He's, he did Free Fire, uh, called, which I watched a couple of years ago, actually. Pretty good film that is. Uh, did that, he did an adaptation of High Rise with Tom Hil Tom Hilston in some called Sightseers as well. Like do like like a black comedy dark comedy horror do with a couple on vacation. Or on holiday, like actually, like killing people, whatever. You know, it's a very keen eye. Of course, he's a he was a Doctor Who fan, watched it at the time, and obviously, I'll get to his next episode as well. well you know, uh, but his direction's pretty solid, pretty good stuff. I mean, some and some good music as well from Murray Gold as well. Actually, very hands and a influence as well in the music. You know, so it's, so it goes more electronica feel, and it sort of works. It does in a way. You know, gets repetitive beats and very sort of beat by beat feeling, and it's pretty good. And also the reveal at the end, which actually is quite funny actually, because it's you know when the Doctor tries to save saves Clara, for like he pretends to be one of those clockwork droids, you know, and he rips the face off, of course. In actual fact, if you slow if you slow it down, actually they, they sort of looked at this as well. It's a mask of Matt Smith. Funny enough, I don't know where they actually got that from, but you know they, they it's like it's a likeness of him, of 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 Matt. Speaking of Matt, speaking of Matt, of course, there's that call at the end of the episode. And it's like, well, really, but. It sort, of, it sort of feels like it's, you know, you know, taints, the, you know, like the introduction to, to Capaldi, really. It's like, you know, do people trust this doctor? You know, this doctor, of course. And obviously it's a recurring theme throughout the series, really. 
Uh, so yeah, there we go. But I would say Deep Breath is a really good start, actually. Really good post-generation story. Capaldi is actually inter very interesting. Loved, good direction by Ben Wheatley. Visually, it's just interesting. Also, the Return of the Clock on Droids as well. It's actually a decent must. Decent to see. Now, next we're going into the Dalek. Basically, the Doctor and Clara and a few soldiers basically end up going down, you know, end up being miniaturised and going inside of a Dalek just to prevent a radiation leak that's turned it nice. Apparently, uh, so it's Dalek and Fantastic Voyage mixed together. Um, it's all it's decent. It's all it's, it's all right, really. I don't really I don't really mind into the Dalek. I know some people have complaints about it. I do have to think the complaint like like maybe the you know Clara slapping the Doctor in the face. That is not um not the best idea. I would say you know it's like you know that's a thing with the Moffat era actually. You know there's a lot of, there's a lot of slapping the Doctor in in the face. And do you think people think it's funny? No. Like in, in, in his thing, is, does does Moffat have a kinky side? Do we not know that? Who knows? So we don't. So who knows? He's probably he's probably been slept by his, by, by his missus, you know, by, by both his wives for many years. Who knows? You know, I don't know. Probably a sexual abuse thing or something. I don't know from his from his like sexual abuse trauma or something from him. I don't know. Just releasing out in Doctor Who or something. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if it's implied to his other comedy work as well. Who knows? Um, but overall. It's not too bad. Direction by it's again directed by Ben Wheatley, who's done the dark, the dark, the stuff with the darks shooting their soldiers and then being blown up and everything else. That's a really good scene, you know, very sort of inventive scene. Good luck, different camera, camera angles as well. Very effective, very effective stuff as well. And obviously, yes, there's a lot of deafness as well. There's quite, you know, since Russell T Davis' era, you know, we haven't seen much deaths really, you know. Uh, obviously, you know. I don't know why the Matt Smith film, it's like a fairy tale, but everyone keeps coming back to life and no, and no one seems to die. It seems, seems that would seem strange. That's one of the, I think that's one of the, the one of the worst things out of the Matt Smith era, really. Um, even though it sort of comes up again a little bit, you know, later later on in Capella's when series nine, which is obvious, obvious one. But there's a good bit of portion of death introduced in the story as well. Very good portion there is, you know. And also when, oh, the character of Ross gets, um, disintegrated by these, uh, my, you know, because of the doctor's doing really, he said, oh, take this, and also he ends up being killed anyway, you know, and also, also they go down to his, into his system, of course, like the, like it's a, a digestive system or whatever, and they said, oh, it's on top player, any press to say, or anything like that, you like, you know, you know, he's just like that, yeah, yeah, yeah he's dead, let's, let's, let's just move on, he's just on top player, you can say any words if you want, or something like that, and yeah, pretty, uh, it's, there's some good moments, like some, it's been a mixed story, really, but I think people tend to like this one. I think as time goes on, you tend to appreciate a bit more, a little bit. Depends if you like it or not. That's the thing. If you're, if you're, or if you're a less Moffat fan or something, you know, fair enough, really. Uh, well, so we got Robert Sherwood is next, of course. Doctor Who meets Robin Hood. A little fun, fun around, light-hearted story written by Mark Gatiss. It's not too bad actually. Tom Riley actually did a decent job. Ben Miller was the sheriff of Nottingham. Pretty good stuff. The robots actually look pretty good. You know, very interesting knights in armour, and yeah, very good. I'm the Doctor and this is my spoon. That's a really good scene, actually. Uh, a pretty good scene, actually. But again, a lot of good comedy as well thrown in as well. You know, one thing to mention is actually, you know, there was a scene missing, of course, when the Sheriff Nottingham got his head to uh, uh, cut off. Like, you know, the sliced off, and he's actually referred to be an android. You can find them on Daily Motion, I think, somewhere, or YouTube or whatever. I think Daily Motion or YouTube do, do actually have it somewhere. You know, it's just like black and white early effects because they got, I think the first five episodes got leaked, they did. Like black and white footage, just early, I think it's like all short stuff without the visual effects going on. And, yeah, you know, obviously the reason why, because they're, I think that at that point, um, ISIS was still around, were at that, around at that point actually, and they, they sort of executed a couple of journalists live on camera, like cutting, cutting, their, you know, cutting their heads off, you know, and obviously made front page news and obviously Due to, due to the cloud at that point, actually, they had to remove that scene. I'm surprised it's never appeared on the DVD collection, unless it's on the Blu-ray, I don't know. If it isn't, well, a bit, of a bit of a waste of footage, really. You know, if you want to see, a, see like, an alternative scene or so, like, deleted scene or whatever, that would have been interesting, you know. Well, fortunately, it's never included. But overall, it's a light-hearted story, and it's a bit of fun, really. Pretty good, pretty decent. So, pretty decent star, should see Series 8, so not too bad. Then we've got Listen. Um... Probably not one of my favourites. I have to say this is, again, one of the weaker stories, really, of Series 8. Um, obviously, it delves into, you know, I think some, some parts are interesting, like the stuff when they see Rupert Pink, 
Danny Ping, of course, when he's in the orphanage. I think that's all right, actually. There's some interesting stuff with, you know, the doctor stealing someone's coffee and everything else, you know, he can't, you know. And obviously, in Rupert's, they're in Rupert's bedroom, and I see, like, you know, this this lump or, like, some some child or whatever, you know, just, you know, underneath the covers. They said, well, to turn your back, of course. Obviously, you know, with the doctor and Clara, they're, like, standing between this little kid, of course. It's, like, protecting stuff really i do like that actually it's interesting you do get a glimpse of maybe like a blurred glimpse of what this creature actually looks like i just think it looks like something out of like colony in, colony in space i think you know like some like the mask of like some like a john perry story i'm trying to think what it is i think it's one of these delegates from i think i think it is actually um not the little spin uh spinman i don't know what you call it call it actually because i need to because i haven't seen colony in space for years um Something like that, really. I always thought it was like, you know, maybe like one of them, one of them creatures is just peering out. Like a little nodding little Easter egg or something, like a little reference to the classic fans. I just don't know. But the stuff involving the doc, the car going back to the doctor's past as a child and influencing him, no. That doesn't work. No, 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 no. That's one of the reasons why I think it's just like, you know, you know that's all them booze. That sort of taints, listen, he does. Um, and it's just... Uh, I don't know. It's not one of the best, really. I would say, you know, yeah. I won't bother going back here, going back here to see that very much. I think I did. I think I didn't when we watched part of series eight. Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons I didn't bother seeing it again. Uh, next up, we go to Time Heist. Pretty good heist movie. Pretty good stuff. The Teller is a fantastic creature. Very good. I think our Steve Thompson's work. It's probably his best one, even though Moffat's co-created as well on this one as well. Actually, you know, he's credited. Co-writing with Stephen Thompson, I think actually excels it better. And Killy Hawes, quote not been much better really, but there we there we go. Uh, so the other members of, of this high sphere actually a pretty good decent a little decent team, interestingly. And yeah, pretty good visual stuff as well, even though it was filmed on a Cardiff University campus as well. A uh, bit of visual effects and also a bit of a park as well with some green screen. If you look at the series eight filming stuff, yeah, interesting. It's just, you know, the teller, really good stuff, and also turns people's brains to fluid or soup and you see like it's massive dent and you think oh my wow this poor this poor bank clerk called Paul Fallon the Sue just drops with a massive dent in his head my god next up we've got is the caretaker um eh, it's all it's all right discovers blix for actually things a big little G a decent idea because it's the return of Jimmy V who's been hasn't been maybe hasn't been doctor for a long time actually because he was doing the Davis era because he was the space pig he was the mox baboon he was Quite a few things as well, actually. He's done quite, quite a bit, a bit. So he's, he's actually returned for Series 8, you know, as playing the Skullbox Blitzer. You know, very sort of ruggedy, ruggedy thing on, like, on uh, office chair wheels and stuff. But I do think it's it's got its little cliche, not 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 to classic era charm to it. Um, yeah. And I do like I do like the scene as well. And the scene that always pops up, I think of it, is when the, the Connie Woods meets the Doctor for the first time. The way he says the caretaker, she was after paper towels and stuff, and she's questioning him and everything else. And obviously, when they depart, he said, "Oh, very nice, you know, what was it Connie Woods, the Doctor? Nice to meet you. Good. Now get lost. You know, that's all. That that is pre pretty good. Like you know, even though you you look at Connie Woods, you think it screams schoolgirl bitch and everything else." You know, to say, you know, for the doctor to say to tell to get, to get lost in the chamber with a smile, he said, "Now get, yeah, now get lost." That that sort of sells it really, and that sort of works. It's like, ooh, bit of a corpus there, yeah, ooh, you know, you know, like a fist, like a fit, like a fist to a face, yeah, like that. Uh, but overall, it's not the best because you focus on Danny Clara. This does Danny Pink being the love interest for other series, really. Um, it doesn't really go anywhere. I know that it's written by Gareth Roberts as well, who's controversial. But also, there have been some behind-the-scenes stuff, apparently. Uh, if you've followed the YouTuber Davis, he mentioned this when he did the Who New Bocca, the Who New podcast for Josh Carr. I think it's episode 12 he's on. Uh, he mentioned he put this in the TV DVD shelf for some apparent reason. And he mentioned that the behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, that's probably like a parody wasn't... You know, like was like was grilling against Roberts for some. You know, I don't know if it's like the direction of the character or something, but some tensions were going on there. Hence why you never see Roberts anymore, really, on writing for Doctor Who. Although, he, although he might have been suggested for Series Twelve, actually, I'm not too sure. I don't know. Like they were sort of think, oh, is Gareth Roberts calling back for Series Twelve? I mean, he really wasn't. Obviously, with the whole thing going on with the whole is um transphobic views and everything. It's like. Hmm, 
you know, that sort of thing. Who knows? But yeah. Kill the Moon's next. Visually, it's interesting because it's in Lanzarote, pretty good. The spider germs are actually a really nice idea. And that's just the good half of it. The bad half is the whole thing with Clara and the whole abortion thing, of course. No idea why. Even though it's actually written for a Matt Smith story. I don't know how that's gonna how that was gonna pay out in his era. I really don't know. Unless it might have been something interesting, I don't know. If that were that might have been an interesting episode going through through his era, but obviously with Capaldi takes on it. It's like, uh, I don't I just don't know. It's a it's a middling one. There's a good you know, there's two halves to it, like there's a good half filming stuff. Visually it looks interesting. Hermione Norris is is it, is it as well. Yeah, so what's his name? Tony Asobo as well, isn't it? He he's done I think he been in Destiny of the Darks and Dragonfly as well. In the classic era, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he played Kane. I think he played um, the, the, the dragon. I don't know what you call it. Um, Dragonfire. Uh, but uh, I just don't know. It's, just, it's a divided story, it is, so we don't really know. Mummy on the Express. Oh, Mummy on the Orient Express is next. Really good story. Foretold. Brilliant. Of course, it's a very Doctor centric episode as well, and it really works. Fantastic stuff, you know. And nothing else said really. It's just a very good story. Based on the true story, very claustrophobic as well. It works perfectly. So there we go. Flatline's next. Again, really good stuff. I really do enjoy Flatline. Um, Clara, I think she's actually better in the story she is, I would say, because she, it sort of builds the seeds to where she, where she might come to the next series and obviously influence the Doctor, of course, and that sort of thing. And yeah, it just works really. The funny theory is that I always thought was that a character in one of the community workers I knew who actually was acting from Casualty, who played a character called Jeff in Casualty. I think Kill the Moon's broadcast i remember afterwards uh, the character of jeff somehow died in ambulance crash of course or you know trying to save i think trying to save something but I said, I said, one of the vehicles exploded i think and obviously got killed obviously two 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 weeks later you, you see him in flatline and you think no and i saw a bit of theory like he, it's probably just him but he's, he's on the like he's faked his own death and gone community service but he ends up being killed at the end by the boneless and yes that's interesting it's got a good one for christopher fairbanks in it as well so what, what's not to love Again, really good story, fantastic. In the Forest of the Night is next, or In the Forest of Shite, as everyone says. Um, it is one of the weaker stories, I have to say, but it's got some, it's it's, it's, it's another light-hearted one like Robert Sherwood. I just think it's just okay, really. I don't mind it as much, I don't love it or hate it. You know, it's just there, really, but I just don't mind it, really. And then we've got Dark Water and Death in Heaven, the two parts, the only two parts in the, ser in the series. Um, I, oh god, what am I going to think? We got Michelle Gomez as Missy, aka the Master. Danny Pink dies. We get Chris Allison as Seb, I think it's called. Unit returns. We really don't do much. That is there. It's a bit of a waste of potential, really, in places, you know. And the whole don't create me thing, don't create me thing was controversial. The whole, the whole thing that saw sort of play, like, you know, Clara Oswald is the Doctor, of course. They did that with the trailer as well, after In the Forest of the Night. You know, Clara's not where she seems. It's like, oh, wait, what? And obviously, you, obviously, you don't, you sort of don't get that. But um, um, you know, you sort of, then you saw that you have that little in-your-face twist, of course, or supposed like you know, those in-your-face jabs, and that she's the doctor, and she's got she gets front bill with her eyes and everything. It's like, well, no, not really. It's just uh, it gets ridiculous. It does. Where's the sound men are just too powerful in this one. They fly, they start flying now, like Iron Man. They sort of become like Iron Man parodies themselves. It's like, eh, well done enough in time to better. This is just falling flat, this does. You know, it's very, oh, and Missy wants to build a Doctor and Army. It's like, ugh. And the cyber stuff as well. Like, cyber brigadier as the Gordon Lethbridge to it. My God, why? Jesus Christ. Ugh. It's a frustrating finale. The ending scene, of course, is actually one of the, high, of the highlights, really, and it works. And then, obviously, you sort of know she's going back anyway, but it's a nice little scene. This whole part of the company, you know, nothing extravagant like she's got a dying ball of flame or something, which probably people wouldn't want to see, really. But, uh, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those frustrating finales when you look back on it, really. And, uh, yeah. There we go. I wouldn't say it's the worst finale, but it's quite frustrating at some points. And then we finish over last Christmas, which I actually think is a decent Christmas special. Nick Frost is in it, that's pretty good. You've also got um, Michael Troughton as well, pretty good stuff. Uh, Dan Stark is an elf, he calls himself Ian. Okay. And we get like uh, the Dream Crabs. I don't know what you call them, I don't know what you call them now. Um, strange name. 
obviously they get reference they get reference there's a reference to alien the doctor says you know like this maybe go alien that's how, that's offensive no wonder we no wonder people no wonder people keep invading you you know I do like, I do think it's pretty pretty little nice little in house joke really. It's also got a bit of Nightmare on Elm Street dream warriors as well about it. Like when Trout, uh, Michael Trout's character gets sucked in for the screen as well, interestingly. And also that scene with Clara in the dream cup, like that's off something like, that's like out of James Cameron's Aliens that is. Again, very tense scene, really actually really a very good tense scene that is. Pretty good stuff. Like you keep thinking about it, it breaks out of a jar and basically just goes there like feeds on the slam comes to the table and she screams. That's really, really good. Really good scene that is. And yes, I really do. You know, it's very fantasy as well because it's all dreams and everything else. You know, but it has like this nightmarish alien quality to it as well. That's again, that's again pretty good. Like I think that's the closest Doctor Who's ever caught homage to the Alien franchise. Very much like all rips it off, really. You know, but there we go. Series eight, two thousand fourteen. What are your thoughts? Thank you guys for watching. As always, see you in the next video. And goodbye.